everyone and welcome to today's lecture. In this final part of the course, we will look at matching problems and see how to solve these problems in a graph theoretic way. Then we will see that this graph theoretic way in fact has a generalization, which in turn has an application in terms of network flaws. That is uh, an area where graph theory is applied to current problems. So let us start one step at a time with matching problems. So what is a matching problem? Matching problem is any type of problem where you have two sets of objects and you want to assign one object from one set to each object from the other. A very common uh, application that can be the inspiration for us to deal with this is job applications. So imagine you have a set of job applicants, maybe 50 applicants, have applied for maybe 12 jobs. And what we want to do at the end of the day is we want to assign to each job exactly one applicant, but it can't be any random applicant. It has to be an applicant who is qualified for the job. So if one of the jobs doesn't have any applicant qualified for it, this will not be possible. Maybe there are other conditions where it's not possible. So uh, we will take a look at under which conditions this is possible or not. So let's look at the following example. We have applicants A1 to A5 who have applied for jobs J1 to J4. And this is how they are qualified for these jobs. So uh, you have uh, job one that has applicants A1, A4, and A5 applied for, uh, qualified for it. Job two has applicant A1 only and so on. Some applicants are qualified for multiple jobs. Some jobs have just one applicant. So in this case, job two has to be filled by applicant one and so on. And a solution uh, of this would be a matching. So that would be a one-to-one -one correspondence between the set J of jobs and a subset of the set of applicants. So here maybe job applicant one gets job two, applicant five gets job one, applicant three get job, gets job three, applicant two gets job four. This leaves applicant four without a job, but such is life. Our goal in this uh, problem is to uh, fill the jobs, not guarantee any job for each applicant. So how would we model this uh, graph theoretically? Well, uh, what we will do is we will create a bipartite graph, G of JA. This notation means that we have the two sets of vertices, say J black, A white vertices, so that vertices only go between edges only go between vertices of different colors. And we draw an edge from a job J to an applicant A, precisely if A is qualified for J. So let's look at how this looks here. So we have our vertices J1, J2, J3, and J4, and our applicants A1, A2, A3, A4, and A5. And we draw edges. So from job one, we go to applicant one, to applicant four, to applicant five, from job two only to applicant one, from job three to applicants two, three, and four, and from job four to applicants two and four. So we get our bipartite graph. And a solution, a matching, would then be a one to one correspondence between the set of jobs and some subset of applicants such that the applicant that is corresponding to the job under this one-to-one -one correspondence is actually qualified for it. In other words, we want to have a one-to-one -one correspondence between all the black vertices and some red or white vertices so that the corresponding vertices are adjacent. And this is what we will call a complete matching. So one-to-one -one correspondence between J and a subset of A so that the corresponding vertices are adjacent. Now, the question we are asking is when does there exist a complete matching for a given problem? And an obvious necessary condition is that each set of K jobs must have at least K jointly qualified applicants, meaning a set of K applicants so that each 
uh, of the applicants is qualified for at least one of these jobs. And this must hold for any subset uh, K. So uh, imagine if you have 50 jobs and 100 applicants, but it turns out that you have a set of five jobs where only four applicants are uh, qualified for any of these five jobs, then this is not going to work because you cannot fill five jobs with four applicants. So this necessary condition must hold for any subset of jobs. The remarkable thing is that this necessary condition is in fact sufficient. So it turns out that this necessary condition is in fact sufficient. And this was a theorem by Hall from 1935, sometimes known as Hall's marriage theorem, because in some context it has been phrased in terms of marriages rather than job applications, but let's stick to job applications and graph theory. So the theorem says that in a bipartite graph with J black and A white vertices, there is a complete matching from J to A, if and only if this necessary conditions hold, namely for each subset of J, the number of elements in H, so this is the number of elements in H, is smaller than or equal to the number of vertices in A adjacent to at least one vertex of H. So in the language of job applications, this says that any set of K jobs has at least K jointly qualified applicants. And this is for each K smaller than or equal to the total number of jobs. So any set of K jobs has at least K jointly qualified applicants. So to prove this, we know this theorem is necessary. So the only if part is clear. We want to show that if this condition does indeed hold, if any set of K jobs has at least K jointly qualified applicants, then we can find the complete matching. And we'll prove that by induction on the number of jobs. So uh, the case where we have one job, then the condition says that this one job has at least one applicant qualified for it. And then obviously you can fill this job, so the case is clear. Now assume you have more than one job, and assume that this implication is true if we have fewer than this number of jobs. So that if for less than if the number of jobs is less than j, then the condition of any k jobs having at least k qualified applicants is enough to guarantee complete matching for those jobs. Well, two cases can happen. Let's sketch both cases. So in the first case, if any k strictly less than j jobs has at least not just k, but k plus one jointly qualified applicants, then you can fill the first uh, job, job number one, with any qualified applicant. Since you had one applicant to spare for each set of jobs, for the remaining j minus one jobs, you're left with at least k qualified applicants for any k jobs. And since j minus one is smaller than j, you can use the induction hypothesis and fill the remaining jobs by induction. If this doesn't happen, meaning that you have some set of k jobs with exactly j, uh, k jointly qualified applicants, well, at least we can fill those by induction because k is assumed strictly less than j. For the remaining j minus k jobs, any number of jobs will have as many jointly qualified applicants. Why is that? Because if you had h jobs that had fewer than h qualified applicants, then these h jobs together with the k first jobs we mentioned would have strictly less than h plus k qualified applicants. Uh, because we assume that these k jobs in the beginning had exactly k jointly qualified applicants. So this contradicts our assumption and therefore cannot happen. So for the remaining j minus k jobs also, we will be able to apply the induction hypothesis and fill these jobs. And this completes the theorem, the proof of Hall's theorem, at least sketching the proof and formulating it in terms of jobs.